PeteTools.com. G'day guys, Pete from Pete's Tools. How are we all going today? Another beautiful day on my side of the planet. It's all good. As you probably know, guys, I brought myself another plasma cutter. I thought I'd show you guys what you get for a little bit extra money, see if there's any difference between the little bit more expensive one and the cheaper ones. But what I thought I'd do today, guys, is we'll set up this Cut 50 plasma cutter because the setup of this is a little bit different to the other ones, and I'll show you in a minute, because this actually has the gauge in the front of it, the air gauge, and you have to set up the air filter just a little bit differently, guys. Anyway, guys, same as usual. You like my videos, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment. Come say good day in the comments below, and let's get into it, eh? Hee hee! So if you've seen my other setup videos, guys, when I set up this machine here, because it hasn't got the air gauge in the front, it has a air filter set up like this, whereas this one here, the new model that I just brought, it's got a hose coming out of it looking like this, and it also has a different setup, the way we hook the air into it. So anyway, guys, that's what we're going to do today. We're going to set up a 50 amp, plasma cutter getting it ready to cut for the first time because a lot of you guys if you're new to my channel and you're new to plasma cuttings if you don't really know what you're doing and the instructions are 250 useless you might run into trouble how to set it up for the first time so we'll set it up today and then we'll do some tests with it on maybe the next video and i'll show you how the thing runs if it runs at all <laughs> so like i was saying guys this plasma cutter here the one I did a review on the other day has the gauge on the back of it and it has the gauge on the back of the uh, filter here whereas this machine here the cut 50 if you have a look at that guys you see that it has the gauge in the front there so therefore we need to alter the way we set up the back on the uh, air filter to get the thing to work properly so that's what we'll do today and we'll set up the torch and we'll get into it eh? Yeehaw! so before you do anything guys you're gonna have to set up this little air filter here it all comes with the machine you can see that in the unboxing video I did for this machine. I'll leave some links below if you want to have a look at that. Little air filter here, and it's got a little switch here that you can get the water out of it. It's just so you try and get clean air coming through your plasma cutter all the time, because you won't be able to plasma cut properly if you've got wet air coming through the plasma cutter, and it also buggers your uh, consumables really, really quick. Like if you're running damp air through the end of your plasma cutter torch, you only get about half the life out of your consumables and it doesn't cut properly. So that's, that's, that's the whole idea of this little thing here anyway, guys. So this is pretty simple to attach, guys. But like I say, it's just a little bit different to the other one that I showed you. Same thing with the little fitting that it hooks onto. Just undo your screws here like so. Just take a couple of nuts off like so. And you may notice, guys, that this has an orange hose, or it doesn't matter what colour it is, but it has a hose, an airline coming out of the back of the machine. This is because this airline coming through the back is connected to this air gauge in the front. So, like I said, we have to route it through the front of the machine so the gauge works and then reroute it back to here. It all sounds very complicated, but it's as simple as, yeah, if I can do it, you can do it. So you get all the little bits and pieces in this box that comes with it, guys. Like I said, you shouldn't have to buy anything. The only thing I noticed that hasn't come with it is thread seal tape, which I got with the other machine that I brought, but we can probably live without that, guys. I noticed there's a little bit of thread seal tape already attached to this little fitting here, but there's nothing here for the uh, actual hose fittings. But anyway, we'll see how it goes, see if it leaks, and uh, we'll go from there, eh? First thing you're going to need to do, guys, is find this little doofer bracket here. See the technical name for it is a doofer. And what you need to do is find that there's a little tit on it like so. Turn it so the tit is upside down because that little tit there fits in this little groove here on this little filter thing. So they make it easy for idiots like me, you see. So we can assemble these machines. <laughs> so just put that in there like so. Grab a couple of nuts. I don't know why they don't give you bloody good instructions with these machines, they really don't. They're, um, they're really horrible instructions. And if you were doing it for the first time, you know, you might wonder what the hell's going on, really. So anyway, that's the object of this exercise. We'll uh, set up this cut 50, get it all ready for cutting for the first time. Yeah! Center that up a little bit there, Pete. Grab your pliers or your crescent. Or whatever, I'll just use whatever I've got to hand. A pair of pliers, guys, just tweak it up a little bit. Don't have to be super tight just so it doesn't knock around too much, guys. And then if you grab your little filter thing, and you'll see that it'll have an arrow on it. See, it's got an arrow that direction, guys. So what we need to do is 
look for the leather direction here, arrow, little tit here fits in here, and that arrow there means the ear is coming from this direction, so we're coming in this way and we're going out that way. But because this has the gauge in the front, we need to connect this hose into here. So the gauge has got pressure in it when it runs through the filter here. Clear as mud, Pete. Clear as mud. But it's really basic, guys. So before we actually attach it on here, guys, I suggest that you put in the little fittings first so you know, haven't not got the weight on there when you're trying to screw these up because it's a bit of a right pain in the ass. So you direct through line, like I showed you before, that's going this direction. So we want a direct through line in and out. So we put one of these little fittings in here, like so. Grab the other straight fitting and put it on the other side here like so. It'll probably be better with thread steel tape, guys. Well, like I say, they didn't supply it. So if they didn't supply it, obviously don't need it, maybe. So we'll see if it leaks or not. Get it so it looks like that, guys. See, we're going straight through. Just grab a spanner, guys, or whatever, and just tighten it up. But don't, don't really give it the gumboot. Don't give it too much because you'll strip the threads inside this. This is only cast. So just make sure it's tight, but not too tight, if you know what I mean. Just tight enough that it won't leak. That's it. Beautiful, beautiful. Then take this ring off here. Lift your machine up a little bit, and that tip that I showed you should fit in there like so. See that? <laughs> and then put this little ring on top. And that ring is only plastic. That's why I suggest you put the fittings on first. Otherwise, you're going to be levering against this plastic thing and you might just break it. Well, I'll break it anyway because I'm a clumsy shit, you know me. <laughs> and I make no apologies for uh, rough as guts, Pete. Cheapest chips and rough as guts. So it looks something like that, guys. See, we've got straight through. We're following the arrow. The arrow says to go that way. So the ear's coming in here. It's going out there. And then we need to stick this hose in here like that, guys. So what I would be inclined to do is cut it off a little bit shorter. So we don't have so much looping out the back. So why don't we do that, Pete? Let's cut them off about what you think. Just like so, but when you cut it off, guys, don't cut it off too bloody short that it's going to put a kink in it because that defeats the whole purpose. Uh, not that I've done that before. Of course you have, Pete. And then grab this little thing here. It's got a plastic end on it. And it's got a thread on the other end. So we'll put the thread in here like so. Like that, guys. Once again, we'll do it up just tight enough that it just tightens it up, but don't get too much that it buggers the casing. Like so. Told you it was easy. Pete can do it. Anyone can do it, eh? <laughs> then what you want to do, guys, is grab this hose and bend it round and just tuck it in there like so. Let me have a look at that so I can show you guys. See, on an angle like that, guys, we're coming around like so. So it looks like so, and then just push it in, guys. Click. You'll hear it go click, and it's got like some teeth in this little thing here. And when you push it in, it'll go one way, but it can't come back the other. That's the theory, anyway. There we go, that's in there now. And that won't pull out of there. See that, guys, because the little teeth are holding it. So to adjust your air pressure, guys, you just pull that up. And either go in or out for more or less air, whatever you want. And if you see you get any condensation or water in the bottom of this bowl here, guys, all you need to do is just pull it out like so, and the water will just piss out the bottom under pressure, and then you're all set to go again. So that's the whole idea of these of water filters and water traps, is to stop any sort of dampness getting into your plasma torch. Now what we need to do, guys, we've got this little bit of hose with it as well. So grab your hose clip. Put it on first. Put your hose on like so. Have your hose clip like that. Grab the screwdriver and just do them up, guys. You can go quite tight with this one, just so we don't get any air leaks. Beautiful day here today, guys. It's really, really nice. Spring. First day of spring, I think it is. So there you go. I'm sick of this really cold weather, eh? It sucks. And the older you get, the less you like the cold. So this doesn't look too bad a machine, guys. Like I say, we'll do a review on the bloody thing once we get it cutting. 
and we'll see what you actually get for $245. Um, and then the next one I will buy will be about a $300 machine. I bought a $200 machine. I bought this machine, it's about halfway mark, $245. And then I'll buy a $300 machine. And we'll see if there's actually any difference for you guys, eh? Now the other end of this hose, guys, just goes into down here. So we'll cut them off once again. Measure twice, cut once. Put your little clip on, Jubilee clip or whatever you guys call them in America. I don't know what you call them, we call them Jubilee clips here or hose clips or any bloody clip will do really. Well, it took me 10 minutes to find a bloody longer screwdriver, but we have one. Yeah! I like uh, having a look at these new machines because, um, yeah, it's quite interesting, really. It's like Christmas time around here every time I get a new machine, eh? That's right. I really like it. Can't wait to get out into the garage and, and show you fellas what they're made of or what they're not made of. Once again, guys, make sure it's nice and tight. And make sure you don't kink it like hard kink it because it won't work now the other thing I don't like about this is it's got a lot of crap coming out of the arse end of it and pipes and hoses whereas if you have a look at this one guys if you have a look at this machine here guys it seems to be a lot cleaner on the arse end if you know what I mean we've got the same inlet here but here it goes into there and then it goes into the machine whereas we see that there obviously see that hole there Obviously, it has a version the same as what this does with an air gauge in the front because then that one there would also have the hose coming out of there. So, yeah, I think it's just a different version of the machine, eh? But you're going to need a little bit more space in your workshop shelf to put this rather than this. But once again, this is probably better for the simple reason that you've got a gauge in the front of it, whereas you have to see the gauge in the back of this one. But what I normally do anyway, guys, is I look on the compressor when I set it up. I don't really look on the plasma cutter what it's doing. But well, that's just me. All right, guys, we can turn this round now and set up the torch. Now, I've already wired up the plug here to my standards. You get a, a little bit of information with it, which I say is a lot better than some of them I've seen. You get a little bit of information if you're on 110 or 220 or whatever you want how to wire it. So I've done it the way I need to wire it. That's why I'm not going to show you guys because you guys may be different to me. You might be running on 110 or whatever you're running it on. So it's just best that you look at the instructions yourself and just uh, wire the plug up yourself, depending what part of the world you're in, you know. Right, all the accessories come with it, guys. Like I say, it's not too bad for 245 bucks or whatever. I think it's actually 55 amp machine, but I just call it a cut 50. Uh, it's got your earth lead. It's got some spare consumables. And what I like about this machine too is it comes with a big plasma torch, not like a small plasma torch. A lot of the 50 amp plasma cutters come with a smaller plasma torch. That's why I brought this actually, so I could review it when it, the machine actually comes with a big torch. Because what I normally do is put a big torch on a smaller machine. So if this comes with a big torch, it must be designed to run on a big torch, wouldn't you think? Anyway, a uh, little spanner here, some other bits and pieces. And here is the P80 torch that I'm talking about. Only about a three meter lead by the look of it, but it's got a flame retardant on it. And see this torch here, guys, it's quite large. Compared to a torch like this, this is only rated at 60 amps max. This is rated at 100 amp max, and it's quite a bigger torch, as you can see. But I, I've got hands like Sasquatch, so I like something big to hold, you know what I mean? I like a big torch, but that's just me. And I also think you might get a better run out of the higher amperage torch because the consumables are designed to run a higher amperage. If you're only running 50 amps and you're running and your consumables are capable of running 100 amp, then chances are that they're going to last longer. Well, that's my theory anyway, and I'm sticking to it. So the plasma torch doesn't already come with the um, consumables fitted, guys, because I think they break during transport, so they put them in a separate bag and tuck them under some polystyrene or something so they don't break. And you actually get a guide with this as well. A cutting guide, a wheeled cutting guide, so that's all good. You get a little spanola thing, a crescent, and you get a couple of sets of consumables, and that this goes with the torch, and then you get another three sets here. So we'll assemble this, guys. It's really easy to assemble. 
Now the smaller one here is the cutting electrode, so we just put them in like so, it screws in first. Like that, and make sure these are tight guys, otherwise they'll vibrate and they'll burn out your torch head. Just like that, they give you a little spanner to fit it. And then guys, we've got the cutting tip. Screw them in like so. This torch is a bit beefier than the torch that come with my other plasma cutting machines. Tighten it up like so. Doesn't have to be hell of a tight, just so it doesn't vibrate. Because you'll find once you start cutting, these things vibrate. And then just your ceramic cup like so. And just a little trick for young players, guys. If you're using this and it gets hot, don't put it down hard because the ceramic will shatter. That's just a little tip for you guys. Because <laughs> Pete's learnt the hard way. So the P80 torch, guys, is really simple to set up. Exactly like all my other torches, if you've watched any of my other videos. Here, I'll just give you a quick demo. You've got your air line here, which also has a lead running up the guts of it. So it's not only an air line, it, it's the power lead for your torch as well. There's a lead that runs up the centre of this, and the air goes around the outside, and it also helps cool off the power lead inside here. So we've got that. We've got your off-on switch plug here for your off-on switch here. Just goes in like so. This is a plastic plug, which is normally the metal. If you have a look here, guys, this is your pilot art switch. Well, it's not really a switch, it's just a contact. So if you put your pilot arc in the middle there, the wire, like so, and just do up the, the little button on it. And once again, make sure that it's tight, guys. Make sure that it's tight, because that'll vibrate as well. And the last but not least here, guys, is your earth. Here's your earth lead here, that come with the machine as well. So we'll just put the earth in like so. Boy, about time to kick it in the guts, see if it actually does anything. <laughs> so guys, I've got my ear all hooked up. See that, we've got air pressure there now. And if I turn that little thing like I showed you, up and down, you'll be able to see that it goes up and down if we want to adjust it. See that, guys? Going down going up, so you just adjust it on that little screw that I showed you on the back there. So I'll run it at about 60 PSI. And then if we kick the thing in the guts, will the thing actually light up? Yeah! Woo! 55 amps. So does it actually work, guys? Yeah, Grandma! So there you go, guys. That's how you set up a uh, Cut 50 Plasma Cutter from you. I like it, I like it, I like it. Yeehaw! So guys, every time I get a new machine, it's like bloody Christmas time around here, but it's not actually Christmas time. Wait till Christmas time, I'll see if I can get two or three together. Hee <laughs> hee! Uh, anyway guys, not a bad little machine. So that shows you how to set up a, a Cut 50 plasma cutter, if you don't already know. If you'd like to see a review on this machine here, Check up there, I've got an in-depth review. We'll see what it cuts, if it cuts, how thick it'll cut, and all the drama. And if you want to see a review on a cheaper plasma cutter, like this one here, this is about $40 cheaper, just check out that side, guys, and you can see that there as well. And you can see the difference, if there is a difference. Anyway, guys, same as usual. If you like the video, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment, come say good day at peepstools.com, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Peepstools.com.com.com.